Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're going to look at some of the factors that determine how warm the lower troposphere will get when the sunlight begins to shine in the morning and then of course continues to shine on the surface of the earth for the rest of the day. There's a number of factors but let's take a look at these three factors first. First of all the incidence of the sunlight on the earth in the summer versus the winter. And of course, we're taking a look at the Northern Hemisphere. At the Northern Hemisphere, we know that on June 21st, the sunlight will hit the Earth right at the Tropic of Cancer, 23 and a half degrees above the equator. So you can see that much of the land masses in the Northern Hemisphere will, re will receive sunlight, especially at noon, fairly close to the point directly above the head, unless you go far to the north. And because of that, the effectiveness of the sunlight heating up the earth is much greater in the summer than it is in the winter time. So for that reason alone, we know that the heating of the atmosphere in the summer will be much greater per hour as the day goes on than it will be in the winter time. Secondly, if we take a look at the location of the sun on the horizon, or in this case, sometimes almost directly overhead, you can see that the sun reaches very high very quickly in the summertime. It takes off and very quickly rises in the sky, and so the effectiveness again of the sunlight is much more so in the summer as in the wintertime, because in the wintertime, many places the sun doesn't go very high up into the sky, and therefore the effectiveness of the sunlight is rather low in the wintertime. Thirdly, the length of the day is much greater in the summer as it is in the wintertime. It gets light very early in the morning in the Northern Hemisphere and it'll get late and, and it'll start becoming dark very late in the evening before the sun sets over the horizon. So there's a very long period that the sun can heat up the lower atmosphere. And the maximum temperature during the day is usually not reached until well in the afternoon, 3, 4, 5, sometimes even 6 o'clock, before the temperature begins to decline. In the wintertime, that's not the case. It will, get light, it will get light very late in the morning and become dark very soon in the afternoon. And so therefore, the sun is not very effective at this time and the maximum temperature during the daytime is reached not very long after the noontime. So those are some of the things that affect the amount of heat that the surface can, can receive and therefore the amount of heat that the surface can radiate into the lower troposphere where the greenhouse gases can absorb it. Notice that on the last video we calculated that the first 200 meters in the lower troposphere should be heating up at about 2.4 degrees per hour per square meter as the sun is in an ideal position high up into the sky. But we realize then if we go in different times of the year, in the winter time where the sun goes just a little bit above the horizon and where the days are very short, you can see that that can drop well below one degree. And of course, I should put a unit in there. That would be one degree Celsius, one degree Celsius per hour per square meter. So you can see that the amount of temperature increase in the summer from morning to noon and afternoon will typically be much greater than the temperature increase in the winter time from the morning to about noon, noon or a little bit afternoon. So those factors definitely deter or not, not just determine, but they've, they have a definite factor in trying to determine how much the lower troposphere will heat up. There's others, and we'll get to those on the next video, and probably the next couple of videos, but these are three very big factors that are effective, or these are definitely the three factors that determine how much effectivity the sun has in heating up the lower atmosphere through the re-radiation of the energy that received by the surface, which is then blocked by the greenhouse gases. And that's how it's done.